Hey everyone, welcome back to Beach Garage. Well, we're going to continue on with our 440 build, and if you haven't already, please click subscribe so you can keep up with the project, and also like my Facebook page because I post pictures of the project as I'm going along, and uh, it's a good way to keep up with the project. But for this video, we're going to be gapping our piston rings and installing them on the pistons. Now, when, when you start your project or, you, or you're planning your project, I talk about how important planning is, and this is why. This block had to be bored out because it was used and it had a lip on there and it needed roughly about 35, 38 thousandths to clean up the block at the top with the lip. Now when you when you choose your pistons you want to choose them ahead of time and you want to buy stock pistons. For this engine pistons come oversized 30, 40 or 55 thousandths. So I was able to buy a 40 thousandths oversized standard size piston, they're KB pistons and that makes it a lot cheaper because it's a standard piston and this is how you can tell what size piston you have. Here's the piston rod assembly. We have some beautiful, these are beautiful uh, eagle rods and we have the KB pistons and the KB puts a stamp on there and you can see right here, I'll try and get a picture of that right there, it says uh, 40. So you know this is a 40 over piston. So when I have the machine shop bore the block, they get the pistons and make sure when they hone the block, it's honed right out to perfectly fit the piston. That's why I have it all done together. And since they balance the entire rolling assembly, they balance the rod, the piston, and with the wrist pin in there, they put it all together to make sure that the balance is perfect along with the crankshaft. Now since I was able to buy a standard size piston, standard oversized piston, and bore the cylinder out to a standard size, you also get standard size rings, which really helps. Uh, these are total steel high performance piston rings. I use these all the time, they're great piston rings. So the advantage of doing that is that when you buy the ring for the piston size on the oversized, they usually gap out almost perfectly. So let's put some rings in here, we'll put a ring in a block, we'll check the gap and make sure they're okay before we put them on the pistons. The process of checking the ring end gap is pretty simple. I'm going to take one of my rings, and this happens to be the top ring, the number one groove, and I'm just going to put it in my board just like this, gently, and turn it, and kind of get it level in there. And in order to get it at a set depth, I'm going to take one of the pistons, and I have a piston with the rings on it, the number two groove here and I'm going to use it sort of as a, a gauge, a depth gauge. So I'll put set the piston in the groove in the, in the bore and use my piston ring sort of as a stop. Push that ring down so it's nice and square. Just like that. Now I can take my feeler gauges and check my gap. The gap is supposed to be between 14 and 26 thousandths. So let's start uh, it's not going to be, I don't think it's going to be 14, but let's just start like around 18. 18 thousandths, let's start there. 18 thousandths goes all the way in. 19 thousandths, 19 thousandths goes in. 20, 20 won't, so I can't get 20. So the gap is 19 thousandths, which is good, it's, it's a, towards the lower end, towards actually the middle. Now remember when you're doing this, the bore is slightly tapered, so it's going to be smaller at the top than it is at the bottom. So you want to get it past at least the first inch here when you do that. That way you're not on the, the, the smallest part of the bore. So be careful of that. Now putting your rings on is a fairly easy process. First we're going to put on the oil ring. So first will be the, the oil wiper, which is a serrated one. And this one you can just put on the edge and just wrap it around gently. Then I'm going to put the bottom rail on, the bottom rail. The bottom rail is one of these skinny ones. Now, what I'm going to be careful in doing here is I'm going to put it in the groove. And I'm going to sort of wrap it around here like that. But when I get to the end, I'm not just going to drag this across the surface here because if I drag it, I'll put a scratch in it. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to lift it up. So you see I'm going to kind of like lift it up and lift it over the oil wiper. Then when it fits in the groove, then I'm sure I don't have any scratches on the piston. Because you can scratch a piston pretty, pretty easily. And if you do that, you might have a problem. So I'm going to clock this one. See, I'm going to put this, 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 this uh, gap I'm going to put up, up here. And I'll start this one down here. This one will go around the other way. Again, lifting up. 
and over so there's no scratches. Okay. Now, oops. Now before uh, I put the other rings on, you have to make sure you put them on the right way. There's usually a dot or a taper or nothing. If there's no dot or no taper, it doesn't matter which way it goes up. If there's a taper on it, like this one has a taper, you can see in the inside here there's a taper on one side, there's no taper on this side. So the taper goes up on this one. So this is the second ring. And when you do this, you want to make sure you use ring pliers because these are sharp and if you put it on there and drag it over the surface, you will scratch the piston. So you put that on gently, put it into the ring groove, like that, release, now oh, it's nicely into the ring groove, and then the top piston for the top groove. See this one? This one has a, this one has a dot in it, right there. See that dot? That dot goes up. So, I'll hold it. Just open it just enough to get it over the piston. You have to be careful. Don't rush when you do this. Get over the top and right into the groove. I'm not gonna let me show you I make mistakes too. See how that one's not really in there? So I'm not gonna drag it. I'm not gonna drag it over there. I don't want to scratch the piston. It's the one thing I don't want to do. So I'll try it again. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now we'll clock them and put them in. Now don't worry about trying to remember all this stuff. When you buy piston rings, should come with an installation sheet, instructions. Talks all about the cylinder deck surface, the clocking the rings, and that's what I'm going to be doing now, which is alternating the gap. It tells you what to do. It tells you the orientation and the shape of the rings. So you don't have to worry about that. Setting the gap, etc. Uh, different kind of rings. And, of course, the little guide that shows the the chart that shows the gap ring and clearances for different size bores. So don't have to worry about memorizing it. It should come with the piston rings. Now there's two different kind of bearings, the rod bearings. There's one with an oil hole and there's one without an oil hole. The one with the oil hole goes on the cap side, not on the rod side. And there's a reason for that. If you could look really close here at the lock notch, you'd see that these lock notches are offset. This is a little bit smaller than this one on this side. It's really might be tough to see, but the reason is this one's this one here is installed correctly, and you can see the the uh, chamfer on the rod here for the crankshaft, and you see how this bearing sits just below that. If I put it in the other way with the oil hole in the top, you can see that the chamfer comes here, and the bearing ex is extended into the uh, chamfer for the uh, crankshaft. So you have to make sure that you put the uh, oil hole in the in the cap side not the rod side. Now I'll start with the number one piston and it's easy to tell which side is number one because as you can tell from the angle of the block the number one piston is always the one that's forward so number one three five seven and over there two four six eight and I'll put number one and number two in because they're on the same journal on the crank that way I can turn around and make sure there's no interference as I work my way down the engine. And in, order, in order to do it, make it easy, I like to turn the block so that so that the bore is vertical or horizontal like this, it makes it easier to drop the piston in. Before you put your piston in, a couple things. First, wipe down the inside of the bore really good. I just use WD-40 on a lint-free cloth to clean out anything that might be in there. Get it nice and clean, blow it out with air. Then, take the crankshaft and make sure the journal is far away as you can at the bottom so when you install the piston, you don't nick the journal. Now when I put the piston in, I am not going to have a bearing in here because as you tap it down it could fall out. Also there are no studs on the end of the rod so I don't have to worry about that nicking the journal. So, you look at the crank, or I'm sorry, you look at the uh, rod here, you see this chamfer? There's a chamfer on one side and it's flat on the other side. The flat 
on each rod go together. The chamfer on this side goes towards the crankshaft. There's a chamfer on the crankshaft. This fits right in the crankshaft. So you've got to have that chamfer facing the counterweight or facing the crank. So I will gently set this in. Okay. Now I have a little bit of uh, lube in there, a little WD-40 to make it easier to put in. And I take my mallet and gently tap it into place. Okay, now I can flip it over and uh, put the bearing cap on. Now I can come in, lift up the rod gently. See the, the pin is out of the way so I don't have to worry about hitting that. Make sure that my rod is clean. And my bearing, I clean it on both sides so I'm sure I have a clean bearing. I'll sit it in place here. Line up the lock notch. Push it into place. Put a little lube on here. Like that. Now if you can see, you can see how the chamfer is on the inside here towards the crankshaft, which goes in the chamfer of the crank. And now I can bring the crank around very gently. And align it with the piston, just like that. And I have my cap here, nice and clean. And when you put these together, the two lock notches go together, lock notch to lock notch. Move on my bearing. Make sure it's lined up right. See, I almost put it on backwards. Line it up, then I can hold the piston from underneath and I got to tap it into place and run down my, put my bolts in. And I'm going to run these down just to get them torqued, not really torqued, just to make sure that the cap is completely closed. Now what I like to do is after I have two pistons in, I like to turn the crank over to make sure they are nice and smooth. And the reason I do that is because if I put two in or if you put them all in then try and turn them over nice and smooth and you have one binding up, you don't know which one it is and you got to take them all out. Now this is turning over real nice and smooth and I can, I'm going to be putting, next one I'm putting in is number three over here so I'll turn the crank so that this is out of the way. Now I can flip it over and put the next one in. Now I can go ahead and torque down all my rods to 40 foot-pounds. Now 
now that I'm sure that these are complete, I have all my rods torqued down to 40 foot-pounds. Uh, and now that I know that I won't have to take the crankshaft back out because anything is binding up, I'm positive that it's going to be uh, staying where it is. I can put my rear seal in. And this rear seal holder, this is a standard rear seal holder that, that you would get from the factory. And it's just a cast aluminum piece. And you see when I put this in here, it's kind of, kind of loose. Uh, so it leaves a little bit too much room there for play and leakage. So I got this billet rear seal holder. When I put this one in here, you can see it doesn't move as much. So it's going to give me a better seal. And all I got to do is put my seal in here, put RTV in there, put my seal in. And then these small, small seals go on each side like this. Okay. I'll coat this with RTV, coat the bottom of it so that it seals against the block. Coat inside the groove, coat all the way around, and I'll put this in. Now if you've ever had to put one of these rear caps in with these side O-rings or these side seals, you've, you've probably cursed out the engineer who designed it a few times. But there's a little trick here. If you put these seals on here and leave them a little bit out, it's like, it's like three quarters of an inch to an inch on both sides, and if you put it in here, put in one end, get the other end in started, and it's kind of, I'm pulling the cap this direction just to get it started. And then you want to make sure you line up with the back of the crank here so you can push it straight down. And when you push it straight down, as it starts to engage and get tight, it'll push those seals up. Just like that. When you get to the end, when you tap it in the rest of the way, those seals will be flush just like that. All right, now, before I can finish assembling or continue the assembling, uh, cylinder heads are aluminum, front cover, chrome-plated, the water housing, water pump outlet, all of that stuff is polished aluminum. The intake's uh, aluminum. Everything else is, is, uh, is aluminum or polished. So before I can put the rest together, we're going to have to paint the block. So that's what we'll be doing next. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.